Hello everybody, welcome to my second round match of Blitz Pit Open Qualifier number two, the October one. Um, I got a buy in the first round. I was playing the winner of Flicky Flack and Hiro Matsiao. Um, and Hiro Matsiao obviously won um, because he's here. He's got three guard on good players and a guard on a troll. He has got block, all of his black orcs are blockless, so that could cost him in overtime if, if we get there. Um, he only has one mobile guard. He's got a Mr. Throw. Um, three rerolls and an apple versus standard standard uh, undead team. Really, I went with the Shoe Hands as a bit of a protection against Woodies, which would probably have rather had a guard on a mummy for this match. So, only got one guard altogether, but hopefully, the mummies can get some punches in, get some rando removals against Armor 9 and uh, do all right. And hopefully PC will be joining us at some point. I am now going to mute and concentrate on playing Blood Bowl, because it's a minute turn. Glorious. No, I won't give in. Until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. Title. Okay, well, hopefully we should be able to get some... Uh... Uh, some commentary going now. I've done a hard restart and things should be up and running. Glorious. Thank you very much, PC. Yeah, that's good. Um, right. I kicked. What, do you think that's a good idea? It won't idea? just be restricted. We won't just be limited to the lovely French commentary teams. <laughs> I don't know that I should have kicked. Uh, do you know what? I've got thinking about what Dio said about liking kicking because you can then use your rerolls to try and, like, you know, turn them over and score, whereas you can't really do that in the second half. So I think I might play a bit risky. Depends. You think you're going to. Absolutely. I love that logic, but uh, it depends whether you think you're going to find it easier to score or defend. Where do you want to be able to use the rerolls? Because the first half you can trash the rerolls, second half you need to, you know, keep them maybe dry if you think it's heading to overtime. Mm. This is, of course, generalised advice, not specific advice as to the actual game he's facing. Because <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Oh, did I? Oh, God, I'm not even muted. Fuck me. Sorry. Okay, I'm trying a slightly different way of connecting, and hopefully things should be a little more stable now. I don't know, though. My system is being completely evil in about 85 ways.
déjà vu des plantes vertes plus réactives que celui-ci. Von Hilda! Von Hilda! I am stuck under the bench! I think it's largely down to my kids stealing all of my internet. Okay, I've done what I can to stabilize my link. I'm finally managing to load into the game, so I will be hopefully on the same time as the game rather than the Twitch stream. So at some point we should be able to get some actual commentary going and I might be able to talk a tiny bit about what the hell is going on. Right now, of course, we have Haruma Zio picking up the ball and he's starting his offense against the mighty Jimmy Fantastic, who is going to stay glorious for us, even though he's going to stay silent. All of his attention being on remembering Blood Bowl. That game he used to play before Among Us was released. There are no footy results. Elp meme, obviously the Arsenal do not play until tomorrow. And all other football is irrelevant. Kiwi Boy, it is that beautiful picture down on your bottom left. I am Purple Chest. The one, the only, and some would say the legend. OK, 
Okay, so we have a fairly standard, if somewhat ugly looking Orc team. That ice blue is just despicable. They've got the ball, they've got it secure, but Jimmy's got a nice elf wall up there. And now he's advancing his mummies up, trying to cause some problems. Oh, he's not going to love that both down. But of course he takes it because re-rolls are so vital in this format. And obviously the mummy can take that hit and hopefully still be good around next turn. Okay, we're seeing the Orcs trying to sweep around the side here. That Blitz trying to give them some space where the undead are not and where that mummy went down. That stun's really not going to help. We've now got a huge opening out on this side. Orcs looking a little unsure as to how they're trying to secure it. That zombie center holding up quite well so far. I wonder if we're even going to see the troll try and activate. Mr. Throw showing just how rubbish orcs are when they've actually got the ball in their hand there. Just doesn't have the speed to get anywhere. So we can all see where he's trying to be with the space for next turn. As can Jimmy, and of course he's sweeping the ghouls round. Trying to cut that area off. Big problem he's got, of course, is the mummies. He's got one tied up in the middle of the pack, which is probably where he wants it, keeping a lot of orcs safe. Other one, sadly, right on the other side of the field. Uh, and with only a white to try and take that orc out and free it, that's a one dice. Not loving the look of that. And, of course, a bob on that white from the other direction, meaning that's all kind of problems too. But the ball's nowhere near there, so not a priority. And hence the white's getting that bit blitz. Oh. That wasn't the dice he was looking for. That one in nine cost him a great position. He was he was trying to set up on that side and a good screen. He's freed the mummy with that lovely two die. That bob, Bob's tied up. And that, of course, means the mummy can come in and try and put some pressure on this central area and cut off that whole other side of the field. Orcs do not have the swap back option now. Again, even with that zombie down, that center of the field still looks really strong with the mummy there holding it up. Orcs not seeing a way back through the other mummy, so they're going to, yeah, absolutely. They're going to push down Jimmy's left there, right. And of course, that does expose the ghouls, and you really don't want your ghoulies messed with. Certainly, I don't. I'm a bit behind Wolf, but I'll be catching up. My client should eventually catch up to the Twitch and then eventually get ahead of it. To the point where my voice should be coming over at the same time you get the images, but it's going to take a while, I admit that. we can just talk about how subway bread is now you know defined as cake until i do catch up but i kind of felt i should mention blood bowl at least once or twice so the orcs settling for strength on the side but not advancing the ball in the way they perhaps could have tried to and maybe should have tried to so that advantage fast disappearing that they had on the field that mummy's still really tying up that central area. The other one's still looking a little bit out of the game, but plenty of ways to get it back involved. The dodge on the ghoul proving its worth there, and that black orc can be easily abandoned by a ghoul that can dodge away any time it chooses to. Obviously, with a 1 in 9 fail, never, ever happening. Jimmy really taking control of that line of scrimmage fight now. 
those mummies dominating the troll and uh, and knocking over orcs left, right, and centre. The zombies, of course, just doing what they do, standing there, getting in everybody's way. Yeah, this is the side we're worried about. Obviously, the two ghouls, a lovely little dodge out, meaning we have a wall. Bit of a trump wall, though. We can see some obvious flaws in it, like the fact that you can just go over a wall with a ladder. <laughs> There's obviously some space down the edge, but if you can push orcs to the edge, they while the blitzers are quick, nothing else on an orc team is. If those bobs try and uh, move around those ghouls, they're going to find that very, very tricky. Now, unfortunately, that one in nine, the ghoul did try and free itself from the bob, and that one in nine did come. Jimmy's not going to be happy with that. Orcs deciding they're just going to sit there and waste a quarter of their turn deciding what they're going to do about it. And now a third of their turn. Halfway in their turn, and one orc has moved. Okay, here comes the blitz, which was always surely going to be on that ghoul. But no armor break. Jimmy's going to be happy with that. That perhaps equalizes that one in nine. And as I suggested, they may have to. These orcs are going to have to push down that sideline, giving hopefully plenty of opportunities to get them stopped. Yeah, that bob's coming over. Unfortunately, that's really tightened that position up. But only a push there does give some options back to Jimmy. He's going to be not too unhappy with how this turn worked out after that one in nine. Things could have looked a lot bleaker. And while they're not looking great, there's all sorts of options here for Jimmy. Even some chains on in that line of scrimmage, perhaps even freeing a mummy up. Calcium Lovers, by the way, he is 1-0 down uh, early, midway through the first half in his game. But he's got the ball in hand and he's looking like he may end up 1-1 at the half. I'll, uh, I'll keep checking in a tiny bit on that one, but I'm not pulling too, too much Twitch, Twitch streams up because Twitch really isn't behaving that well for me right now. Okay, we've got what I'd call a half Venger bus there. So it's a very tough cage to dodge into. Nothing is going to be touching that ball, but there's all sorts of ways to get around in front of it. And as I suggested, there's a, a, some lovely chains on up at the line of scrimmage, possibly even clearing a mummy out. Yeah, I think I had the volume a little high on my phone where I'm watching calcium, so as not to put too much load on the connection to my uh, my PC and some of that managed to come down the mic. So apologies for that. Oh, so he, he did manage to push that mummy out as I suggested. Uh, not suggested, as I uh, intimated he might. Obviously Jimmy is not listening to me. He's way too busy playing the game. And that's mean he's taken the black orc out, freed up that white. And suddenly things are looking in a much better position for him to cause some problems for this orc advance. Putting the armoured white in. Oh, oh, and another one in nine fail for the ghouls. If only there were dice, Jimmy could be raging about them. But of course, as we all know, there really, really aren't. Now, this time the orcs do seem to have solved there. There's only one obvious thing to do, and I'm going to waste half of my turn before doing it problem. And have pushed straight down that flank. Black Orcs go in the position, lit to knocking out the white, and now the whole gang pushes forward. Unfortunately, Jimmy, of course, still has his three re-rolls dry because the things that have been failing haven't been re-rollable. They've had natural re-rolls that have also gone down. And again, not even a nice looking four or five plus dodge into that ball.
Now, there's been some discussion on one of the forums I go on about a Canadian end zone being slightly longer, uh, and maybe a two-space end zone around some space to get around in front of a drive. But the Orcs have still left those two spaces. But of course, that guard blitzer right out in the central field, having a little hugging with that ghoul, is really causing some problems. Okay, Jimmy throwing a go for it in and getting that mummy right up in his face. Everyone loves a hug from their mummy, except ball carriers, who really don't want mummies getting that near to them. They're much more of a daddy kind of thing. And the mummy up on the line of scrimmage has isolated that troll beautifully, but there's still a lot of pieces tied up by a big green glob of shite. Finally, a ghoul does something halfway useful. That frenzy orc, and I don't love frenzy on an orc unless you've got loads of guard to support it. Support it. Really in trouble if it tries hitting that uh, that ghoul. Yeah, I think we're going to see the troll not even bother to try anything. It's just going to sit there trying to tie that mummy up. But of course, that blitzer does give the mummy a way off. I think the orcs might even try and score here. I'm not seeing a lot of options for them to stall anymore. Oh, and the dodge fails. There's a reroll going in on it. Is it going to be a one in nine? It is a one in nine. So we've seen a couple of those for Jimmy. The orc can't really complain that he's rolled a one in nine himself. And that ball is in a beautiful position. I think we're seeing nil-nil at the half, unless there's anything that Jimmy can get on it, and I just don't think there is. There's nothing with any pace up that end of the field for Jimmy, and there's nothing with the Orcs to recover for. The Ghouls... I'm using my... I had to take my shoes off. I'm doing the counting with my toes, and I still don't think a ghoul can... I don't think a ghoul can get there. No, I tell a lie. Having taken both shoes off and using all of my toes, if a ghoul does manage to get that ball and do all of its go for its in two turns, it can get there. So we could even be looking at a Jimmy 1-0 turnover touchdown here. If you're a Jimmy fan, you need everything crossed, because so far his dice have not led us to believe that is going to happen. And with time running short, if he's going to do it, it's got to get done now. If it were done, then bet it is done quickly. A little bit of Macbeth for you there, Shakespeare lovers. He's going to try the two die first with seconds ticking down. But of course, we all know the Blood Bowl final seconds. Blood Bowl 2's final seconds can be abused. The Blackhawks out the way. There's no dodge needed. Just a pick up and two go for it. So here we go with the pick up. And boom! Dice say no. The roll goes in. And I still say no. It's not to be. Jimmy will be cursing that. But on the other hand... Perhaps he's taking good news from the fact that it's a nil-nil at the half with the ball in his hand. Well, on the floor. But his side of the pitch. Now, maybe there was an argument, one of the other ghouls, because there were two ghouls in the same range. One of them could have gone up and done the two go for it, and then the other one tried to recover. But that, of course, wouldn't have left any knocks on that black orc that was nearby, and the route to the ball was slightly tricky. So I think I'd have done it the way Jimmy did. Just hoped that one in nine didn't come. But it's not his day for one in nines. That's three crucial ones he's failed in this half. However, the one crucial one the orcs failed have cost them their drive.
And although the Frenzy did get a Frenzy, a poor man's tackle, they say, did manage to get that ghoul down. It's only a stun. I think you've got to call this as Jimmy's half. There's been no material loss. The Orcs are not going to score. Yeah. I respect the fact they went for it, but it was incredibly long odds. And it's not happened. So the only thing Jimmy can really look at here is if there's any damage to be done. If he can take an Orc off, orc off pitch. Orcs, of course, short of any kind of bench here. Trusting to their AV9. But they do have an Apothecary in hand. Be nice to see that gone, but as I said, there's a hell of a lot to be gained just from the fact that it's your ball and they didn't score. Perhaps you don't want to risk anything other than well, maybe a zombie foul if one really leapt to mind. Oh, you'll have to forgive me. My partner's just turned up with a very nice stew. I haven't checked Twitch for a while to see if I'm even audible. With the West, I'm not sure we can be friends if you're calling me Zunk. I'm younger and a damn sight sexier. Not that I think Zunk isn't a wonderful human being. Gets the bob down, finally. Still no armor breaks on Jimmy's side. We've seen a stun or two, but nothing that makes you excited. Nothing to get the blood pumping. Here comes that foul. And no one even noticed, including the ref. So we do go in, in for oranges and turning ends at 0-0. Zero, zero. But it's Jimmy's ball, and he's got to take that as a huge victory. Over on the Calcium side, having looked fairly positive, Calcium has managed to be two down at the half. That's probably not going to change, is it, at this point? I think Calcium's probably going down. In front of his children, too. Oh, the humanity. So got the Orcs in the standard rule of five, which is all too common on BB2, particularly when you have AV9 and really don't have anything desperate to protect. I'm not sure seeding the sidelines to a team full of four fast ghouls is a great way to try and defend when you haven't got a touchdown. And you've got a slow team that even if Jimmy scores in three, you're going to struggle to get it up the field in five. I wonder if Jimmy's going to push down a flank or if he's just going to settle for some hitting and then try and outmaneuver the Orcs later on. From his setup, it looks like he's going to do some line of scrimmage hitting rather than try and dominate a flank. I get why. I'm not entirely sure that's what I'd be doing. It's one of the beautiful things about Blood Bowl, though. You can put three good Blood Bowl coaches in a room, ask them what to do about something, and you'll come out with five different answers. And one of them will be upset. That. <laughs> and someone will call someone a shitter. Yeah, I think Zunk is the uh, the happy shopper version of me. I'm not sure happy shoppers existed for 20 years. Probably quite a lot of people watching this stream will not know that reference. Ah, so the apothecary goes in. It's good news and bad news. I mean, the orcs, obviously the orc isn't off the pitch, but the orcs are now 11 men with no backup. gloriously safe play from Jimmy here before he even goes with the blitz. He's put a double screen up in front of the ball. Even if anything goes wrong here, there's just no way the Orcs are getting that to that ball. They don't have the speed. They don't have the agility. 
Lovely move, a little marking up that black hook there, trying to take it all the way out of the picture. Of course, it's an expensive piece with guard. If he can sideline it with just a, a cheap little zombie, that's a good thing. And another one in nine down for Jimmy. Again, if there were dice, he'd be cursing them. But as I said, with that ghoul pack, securing the ball pickup area and the big line of scrimmage advantage up in front of it, I don't see any way the Orcs can turn this to their advantage. They've probably got a try as they didn't score. And uh, coming around that side where they've moved their first Black Orc is, is the obvious way to do it. But I'm just not sure they're going to be able to achieve much that way. Push the lump of lard up onto the line of scrimmage, seeing what it can do. Trying to hold that mummy in place. And obviously it allows him to use that frenzy piece. Which makes the power and gets away as well. The key probably to this orc defense is obviously their one tackler. Facing four ghouls, that's the piece he's going to really hope does some work in this half. It's quite a lopsided orc build, this. With one black orc skill. You tend to either see two, four, or none. Oh no, I tell a lie. I missed it. There are two black orcs, aren't there, with guard. And then we have a tackle. We have a frenzy. We have a guard blitzer. And then for some reason, he's put guard on his troll. I know a lot of people like skilling their big guys. I, I just think they're not reliable enough for, the, for one of your six skills to go on in a format like this. But your mileage may vary. Particularly if you buy a Ford. Now, interesting there, using that. Two die with the white, not to set up another dice on the black orc, but to get some uh, some movement going and clear this nasty orc away from the ball, securing that position even more. Jimmy, of course, is still in a great position. It's still his drive. As long as he can get it home, he wins this game. Doesn't need to do anything flashy. Just needs to get the ball over the line at some point in the next seven turns. And a pickup works. There'll be a little party in Jimmy's heart that that one in nine finally went his way. Jimmy using his advantage on the line of scrimmage with the two mummies there to create a very loose cage. There's still no way into it. And of course, one of those advantages of a loose cage like that is it's very, very hard to tie everything up and not prevent a way out of it. If the orcs overcommit to taking any one corner of it down or trying to take a mummy out, they're probably going to create a hole the other side that the ghouls can run into. And if the two zombies that are upfield can do any kind of work at all in uh, freezing some orcs up and taking some hits, which they are looking to do, Again, that could sideline just enough of these slow orcs that it really, really gives the uh, the undead a way forward. Mm, pushy good. But pushy real good. Another deep 80s cut for those of you there who remember that time. Or well, whose parents play them good music. There's just not a lot of thinking time in this format. The Orcs do seem to have turned that round from the first half. They are trying to act earlier in the turn, trying to get things done. And they're trying to do a lot of the work here with the Troll and the Black Orcs, leaving that tackle around the back for it in case there's a quick breakdown one side or the other. Prendre un coup dessus, en dessous de la ceinture. 
Yeah, Jimmy's got him in such problems here that he's blitzing zombies. And if you're blitzing zombies, you're probably not in that great a place. The stun's a good result for the Orcs, though. It still puts a lot of Orcs over one side of the pitch. And hence he's moved the tackle over to the other side. Because, yeah, he's thinking Jimmy may well try and come down that flank this turn. I'm not so sure he will. But it's certainly a possibility the Orcs needed to guard against. And Jimmy is going for it down that flank. I'm not sure we're going to see the guard advancing that way unless a lot of ghouls and the ball are going that way too. There goes in the safety wrestler. Puts two dice on that black orc and takes it down. Here comes the blitz on the tackle piece. It's only a push, but he can push it. Oh, I might well have pushed it onto the zombie myself, but at least it's not doing anything problematic, and there's plenty of space for the ghouls to run into. Now, Jimmy's considering, is he going to really commit to this? Push a ghoul out, ghoul out forwards and run out to the side with his ball. Or does he think it's not quite worked and he doesn't see the position as good enough? If he goes, of course, he's leaving the mummies behind. Maybe the white dodges out afterwards, but the mummies are going to stay where they are. Tick tock goes the clock. We're into the final 10 seconds. Perhaps Jimmy's had a very important phone call. No, the ball has gone out to that left. Jimmy not risking any go for it's on the blitz piece. All looks safe. I think Jimmy would really have liked that tackle piece down and then the ball could have pushed a lot further forwards. The white does manage to dodge out though. Really secures the front of that drive. And now as I said with the Orcs being much slower than people always realise. There's a lot of panic in that Orc heart. Can they get anything back in time to stop this drive? Do we hope they do so that we see an overtime? Or do we want Jimmy to win it in natural time? <laughs> yes, he has left a one die on the ball, but it requires a three plus dodge. And then it's a one die against a blodge piece. Ah, it, it's, a, it's a classic re-roll sucker as well. Yeah, three plus, five plus. And the last thing anyone wants to do at this point is throw all their re-rolls away. Orcs obviously hoping to at the very least push this into overtime. Yeah, which is why we're seeing the Blitz come up front much more about stopping the drive than it is about taking the ball away. Even if you got the ball down there, the recovery options were just terrible. So I think I would have done exactly what the Orcs did. Try and secure the position, try and get some players active ready for next turn. Don't worry so much about the ball at this point. Oh, we got a big, really stupid right in the middle there. And again, that's why you don't put your guard on a big guy. Leaving a huge hole that could possibly be run through. Is Jimmy going to push down this flank? Is he going to turn back and try and go through the centre? I know what I'd do, but obviously I'm not coaching. Not that Jimmy would listen as well as playing. No one would think he'd do that. Okay, but that blitz tells us exactly what's going on. He's coming down this edge. He's saying, all right, you've got three blitzers and Mr. Throw coming after me, but none of those scare me hugely. That tackle piece has got to be a slight worry, but there's always some slight worries in life. Ooh. Just when he decided the orc at the back couldn't be trusted. It cost him his one of his re-rolls on a double skull. But it would have come somewhere. So there's as good as anywhere. Yeah, now the ball position is not looking that secure. He doesn't like the look of that flank, so he's pulling all the way back. 
looking to see if something good can happen for him next turn. Misclick the follow, what an absolute idiot. <laughs> Really, of course, with the Apothecary gone, what Julie's really hoping for here is to chip any Orc. Doesn't matter which one. If you can get the numbers down to 10, that's a much better position. Ooh, but the other way round! Loses one of his whites. And it's not coming back. Again, Jimmy's dice not quite holding up. Strength through adversity, though. A great learning opportunity for Jimmy. Fantastic. So the skulls have been equalized. And the frenzy takes the ghoul out. Jimmy's now two down on this drive. 11 orcs versus nine undeads. Lucky the ghoul is absolutely fine. And of course, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy does have a bench. Only a zombie, but he will be back to 11. If nothing else happens and we head to overtime as we are casualty-wise. Jimmy's got to be asking, though, if that blitz down that left side was sensible. If he didn't follow it through with every single piece. If he was pulling back, then that cost him a ghoul. And if we see the troll come back into the game too, suddenly this could start to look a bit dark. We should all put on small beards and call this the darkest timeline. Oh, and the troll fails. Again, this is why I don't trust big guys. Particularly in a format like this, you just can't afford the amount of randomness they bring in. Now, is there an opportunity here for Jimmy to, to zip up the other side or break through in any way that's safe? It's not immediately obvious, but there's got to be some way of taking advantage of this situation, surely. I have to say, I I don't see it. It might take a cheeky one die, or even a two against. Okay, really sensibly, I think Jimmy's just choosing a layup on the other side, away from where a lot of the Orcs now are. Lovely one die on that, Bob. I said it might take a one die. Sadly, not flood up with a pal on that, Mr. Throw. But if you can't see the space there, well, let me tell you, there's a load of space there. And at the moment, there's only really one blitzer. The tackle blitzer, sadly, but only really one blitzer that's going to be able to get back there and be effective in the next turn. What Jimmy can do with that I don't 100% know, but we're all going to find out. Sadly, the Orcs see that problem too, and they are sweeping instantly everything they've got with feet back over in that direction. But another troll, stupid. Again, just leaving that mummy in a very dominant position in the middle of the field. And with two mummies and two markers, there's usually a way he can clear one of them and get it moving if that's what he chooses to do. If not, he can certainly dominate that area and knock a couple of orcs down, see if he can finally get an armor break worth having. Oh, you forget how good stew is, don't you? Your partner says, I'm cooking a stew, and you think, oh, really? Okay. Not steak, then. No potatoes, then. And it turns up, smells great, tastes great, warms you up, fills you up. And all it requires is a thank you. Now, no one minds seeing Mr. Throw as a screen. It's like people that put up a bead curtain and call it a door. question is, is he risking any go for it on these Black Orcs? And I think the way he's been playing so far, he's not going to. We're down to two re-rolls each for kick equity, mate. Or kequity, as some people have christened it. We shouldn't listen to those people, though. They are bad people. 
Now another fail and an armor break leading to a stun in the middle of the field. So we've got both the troll down and a stun do. What's that? Lineman. Oh, not so important. Top money. Finally, we get a knockout on one of the Black Orcs. Finally, Jimmy's dice might be turning into something less than utterly horrific. Of course, nothing the Black Orc, the, uh, the Orc team can do about it. Their apothecary is gone. And we do have a mummy on the move. Okay, Jimmy deciding that time is too tight. He's going to have to move that ball forwards. His remaining whites doing the blitz for him. Ooh, takes down Mr. Throw, but does not move him away from the ball. It's a good result, but not a great result. I can't see the Orcs mis risking a minus two die. Or two red dice. That's blood bull two players tend to call them. Or two die uphill, two die against, or the bad block. But Jimmy putting something in front just to make sure that that white doesn't get cancelled, doesn't turn it into a one die. Even then, one die with a Mr. Throw on Blodge is not something you should awfully worry about in a format like this. And of course, if Mr. Throw stands up, he may go, everybody's gone surfing. So the abandoned troll looking low, low, forlorn and lone back there. Let's hope the orc isn't watching this stream because I think he forgot he's got a blitzer right down there, bottom left. Way out and not moving. As long as he forgets it's there, then the numbers are not too bad for Jimmy. If he gets back involved in the play, things look bleak. Probably a time issue, but it might be he's just got the tight client too close in and forgot it existed at all. Okay, so we've got some kind of defense back for the Orcs. They're still allowing a little bit of space up that sideline, but it's very, very tight. And from what I always hear, Jimmy likes it tight. Ah, uh, he has remembered that blitzer. And now it's coming back to try and say, hey, remember me? I want to play too. And that means the troll gets up. I mean, the mummy now has a choice between staying there and hoping to tie some orcs up or trying to one die. Oh, the black orc went for a dodge. The orc thinks he's really in trouble. He's trying to his, dodge his black orc. Of course, that doesn't leave the mummy really much of anything to do, but he can't really roll this, can he? It's a 50% shot. Is he really going to throw one of his two re-rolls on the 50%? He is! And it doesn't work. I think that was terrible. But there we are. I'm not coaching those orcs. So now Jimmy has a one re-roll advantage. He's got a reasonable position on the side. Despite there being a lot of orcs around, surely he's got to push on forwards. Well, Mr. Throw's now on the edge, but is he surfable? Uh, sort of. I mean, at the moment, it's two red dice to surf him. There are ways to make it one die, but... You know, Jimmy's got two turns to make it over the touchdown line. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a potato through the centre here. And there's some things that can come and protect that ball. But it's by no means a done deal. That blitzer that finally came back and helped the troll has got to be a slight worry. Perhaps the mummy can tie it up. Certainly that seems to be what Jimmy's got in mind. And he's left his final white back because it can solve all kinds of problems. No, it's going early. I might have done the mummy hit first, but... Oh, well, the mummy's blitzing to form the third corner of the cage. Yeah, I do like that. Oh, and he gets the big injury on the troll now, does it, Regen? It looks very much to me like it does. Yes, it does. 
Love the fact they've put that in so that you can tell before the roll is made. That really makes the game wonderful. Just the two go for it. Just the two steps. Doesn't really need to finish that cage. The odds of an old trying to dodge in seem very, very low, but perhaps he'll do the go for it. Just to put it up in case the orcs uh, hit their way in through one of the corners. Or perhaps he'll be content to tie two orcs up. Oh, the ghoul doesn't make the second dodge. And we are done with that turn. Another one in nine fail for Jimmy there. True snakes. I mean, it was a 1-1, one, one, but a 2-2 two, two would have been as evil. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. So the Orcs can base the ball with their tackle, but they can't hit it. Not unless they're prepared to do a four-plus dodge and two go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, okay, one go for it, but a four-plus dodge. I have a feeling we're going to see him come in and attack the wrestler rather than the ball. I hope that that gets it done. That blitzer, of course, in the only real space to attack the ball from. Again, the frenzy surfing a zombie, frankly, entirely irrelevant to how this uh, this drive is turning out. Um, pulling that blitzer even further away from where any of the action is. Frenzy being a nega trade since 2003. Here comes Mr. Throw, limping the five squares he's allowed as the terrible, terrible blood pulp piece that he is. And again, we've got three seconds on the clock when the blitz comes in. Nice thing about a late-term blitz is no matter what happens, they can't really respond to it. Oh, but a Black Hawk does make the dodge and tie that white up. Had that four-plus not worked, Jimmy had the easiest touchdown in the history of blitz bit. I mean, not, but you know what I mean. Now that it has worked, things are tricky. Does he do the one die blitz? Does he try the four plus dodge? Does he just go for a quick one off the wrist and say, actually, I didn't want to play anyway? Calcium fans, he has pulled it back to 2 1 down, but it's turn 16, and the ball is secured in a corner on an elf, and he's just lost. But there's a smile on his face, and he's been ignoring his kids for entirely too long, so finally they're going to get some parenting, maybe even some dinner. Probably not all of them. I mean, who can afford to feed that many kids? Oh, the big, big fail there from Jimmy. Not what he wanted to see. We are going to overtime, I think. I'm not seeing any scoring threats from the uh, from the undead. Everything worked beautifully, creating that opportunity for a two die to get out of it. But it just wasn't a B. The dice said no. Of course, it wasn't a it wasn't a double skull. It was a skull and a both down. But that's the sure hands ghoul. Uh, not that it's sure hands have been a cock all used to Jimmy this game. Um, but of course, that means that a both down is as bad as a skull. So we are going to overtime with one reroll each. So at this point, you just need things to survive. The mummy takes that hit and says, Come on, is that all you've got? But the other mummy's getting smacked too. Don't hit your mummy's kids. They've always loved you. Both go down, neither goes out. The mighty blow not breaking the AV9 and the... Uh, the mummy's armor holding perfectly too. We go to overtime. 
who gets the ball. Not the only thing that matters, but it could be very key. Oh, it's Jimmy's ball. Now, as I said, there weren't any more injuries, so despite losing a white and replacing it with a zombie, he does start with 11. The Orcs also start with 11, but have no apothecary. So they can't save a KO. Anything that goes KO has gone for the game, because, of course, there's only one drive. Anyone that scores wins this game. Now, again, he's gone with the rule of five. Is Jimmy this time going to try an instant push down the side? Or is he again going to try and dominate and then find an opportunity later? Of course, the problem with pushing down the side is it's the one time that frenzy piece might actually be of value to you. Rather than a nightmare, you have to constantly think about how you support it and really often getting you into trouble and pulling himself out of position. Frenzy, a nega trade. Tell me I'm wrong and I'm just not going to believe you. Yeah, this time Jimmy is setting up for the side push. I think it's time to try that with only one reroll. Two good turns here could see this whole game ended. Now, without a mummy with guard, obviously we're going to see at least one mummy hanging around that line of scrimmage. Uh, but that catch is a beautiful thing for Jimmy, and it does mean that this push is definitely on. He's going to try and take a deep field position here, even if it means everything gets hit to bad places. Try not to swear, Jimmy's a monetized man. Um, even if it means everything gets hit to bad places, he's going to let that happen as long as he gets the ghoul with the ball to the end zone next turn. And that's why I hate the rule of five. I mean, look at this. This isn't a defense. This is saying, hey, have the wings. I don't mind. As long as you don't hit my AV9 pointless players that I don't need next game because there won't be one. Ah, <sighs> people. Someone told this coach about the rule of five and they went, oh yeah, I'll just do that every time without thinking whether it's valid for this particular setup and this particular opportunity I'm facing. This time, it isn't. It was a huge, huge mistake. And I think it's just cost him any chance in this game. I think it's really unlikely anything stops Jimmy now. I think this is a score and a win next turn. We'll have to see something creative from the Orcs. And so far, we just haven't seen that. Now, there's just a slim chance that if somehow they knock both the zombie down and the mummy down, and something runs all the way around the barrack, that they could knock the ghoul down. But it's the kind of format where you're not going to get everything 100% safe and sometimes you just got to say, do you know what? You can make that work. You can make it work. Fault force letting Jimmy down there as he so often does. And again, Jimmy's not going to care with that piece going off the pitch. It's all about this turn and the next turn. 17 for the Orcs, 18 for the Undead. And if it doesn't work, things might look tricky. But it's certainly a really, really good chance of getting something in. Is he going to try an elf wall here? Get enough orcs back to stop it somehow? No, he's going with the frenzy piece. And it hasn't worked. Of course, if you are going to hit a blodger and you really need it to work, and you've got a tackle piece, you or I might have used the tackle piece. Um, not that it would have helped a lot, but, you know, it would have been better. He would have failed it in a better way. <laughs> and his last, what, his last re has gone in because he just needs to get something happening here, and right now, it just isn't. Trolls coming in to pointlessly mark things that don't need marking. And now the remaining blitzers have to somehow get around the back without any re-rolls to cover them. 
No, he's not even bothering to. That's got to do go for it. It's that it just has to. He's just giving up. Is it tea time? Is your mum going to read you a bedtime story and it's, you know, getting to that sort of time of day? There he goes. The re-rolls went in. Why that took any thinking, no one can explain to me. Perhaps he was counting whether this one, which could obviously get back and help, could get back and help. But not doing a... Oh, just stop in there. Fine. Yeah, that's your two. That's your one go for it. Why do two? Why actually secure the wing when you, you know, need to completely stop this? Ghoul just walking it in. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel a bit cheated by how... Com oh! The reroll makes it all fine, though. I feel a little bit cheated by just how appallingly the Orcs didn't defend this overtime. And Jimmy did exactly what was asked for him. And... Booyashaka! There's the 1-0. Well, a thrilling high-scoring game. I'm sure we're all delighted with that. Uh, and frankly, glorious. I do like Jimmy, but the right coach won. He coached better. He took the opportunities better. A lot of one in nines cost him, but he still managed to stop, sort that first half when a single one in nine ended the Orcs. And he Thank got you. over for the win. Well done, my friend. Thank you very much, PC. Yeah, there were some horrible oh, one in nines, God. wasn't there? <laughs> my oh, God. My God, there were some one in nines that game. But. Certainly were. Not least of which the the the, the 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 last one with a ghoul to just score the win, and then to do the same with a blitz in the overtime as well, and all the dodges. Oh my god! Congratulations, Jim. Thanks, Kelsey. Am I playing you next? Have you seen who you got next? Is it you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glorious! <laughs> oh my god! Um, I didn't want to invade your stream. Um, I'm I, I'm happy to wait five minutes or so because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty freaking frazzled after the two games I played. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Well, um, I shall wrap up the YouTube video. So thank you very very much, PC, for commentating. Ah, uh, my um, pleasure. And thank you. I feel I've lied to everyone though. I I was trying to keep an eye on calcium on my phone. I right? two nil down at the half, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's quite a comeback, isn't it? Two nil. I was Wood Elves, though, right? So I guess if anyone can come back from no, two nil down, I was down two nil up. I was two nil up. Ah, uh, you were two nil up. Two nil up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I would never have thought that, of course. So that's probably why I didn't see down. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Right. Thank you very much. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>